Do you know what every website design needs to start with? So whether you are starting a brand new website or you're redesigning one, this interview is going to be fascinating for you because we're going to talk about things like your brand identity, your content strategy, etc. So today I am with Lee Drozak. She is a WordPress designer and strategist, and um, we're going to be talking about this stuff. So. Uh, whether you use WordPress or you use a different kind of platform, I think you'll get a lot out of this interview. Let me first read you Lee's bio, and then I'll bring her on. So Lee Drozak is a web strategist who knows WordPress design and development, and she loves to share her knowledge with other savvy small business owners and service providers. Using her knowledge of design, development, and content optimization, she gives her clients a different perspective on creating a website that is both user friendly and client attractive welcome lee to this interview hi george thanks for having me yeah so just want to be clear you are you've been working on wordpress for for years so you are definitely a wordpress expert but what we're going to talk about today is going to apply to people whether or not they use wordpress yeah correct yes okay awesome so um i'll let you i'll let you get started with whatever you want to share and i'm sure i'll pop in with some questions okay perfect so I want to start by saying that a website design, people think that it, is, it starts with picking a theme or even before that, picking a framework. Like I prefer WordPress, but you have Squarespace and Wix and Weebly and then picking a theme so that everything is pretty and a, a kind of pre-set up for you. But the reality is the first step in planning or designing a website is the strategy and planning. Because without that, you really, it's hard to create a user-friendly website. And gone are the days of brochure sites. And brochure sites are kind of like, have it designed, put the content in, set it, and forget it because everything moves really quickly. We want interaction and engagement. And I mean, that's really relevant with how popular social media is. So your website has to kind of keep up and play that game. And in order to do that, you need to really think about where you want to take your customer from beginning to end. And that starts with the strategy. Because website design isn't just about the aesthetics, it's about usability and being user-friendly and functionality. So for my planning, I have a three-step process that kind of encompasses that whole phase of strategic planning for web design. And it's brand identity, and then pathway solutions and content strategy. And so I'm gonna to touch a little on each of those. So brand identity, when we think brand identity, we think the aesthetics, logos, colors, fonts. But really brand identity is your cohesiveness of your brand across the board. So whether it's on your website or you're promoting it on social media or even at a networking event, you need to be consistent so that you remain authentic. So instead of just when you hear brand identity, thinking what colors am I gonna use? Or, oh my gosh, what, you know, what fonts? There's so many fonts to pick from. We need to back it up and start with your message and your vibe. So there's a lot on the internet about picking your ideal client and picking your brand message, but it's really geared towards marketing in the past. So you have all your props, you know, what's the age group? What's the demographic? Where do they shop? What do they like to read? And then it's even more confusing if you're business to business, because then you're like, I don't know where they shop. And that's not even relevant to me. So I'm going to take you through one of the exercises that I take my clients through. And then this exercise will be relevant through the whole three-step process. And it's think of, think of it of a party that you would like to plan or an event that you want to plan. And so this party, we're going to think about a couple things. We're going to think about the actual party itself. How do you want it to be? Do you want it to be fun and exciting? Do you want it to be laid back and more subdued? Do you want it to be huge, you know, a 200 person soiree or, a, you know, a three person intimate gathering? 
And that's where you want to start because this is going to allow you to really drill down on the details without kind of getting you stuck. And so in this party, we need to think about what are you going to serve? What kind of music are you going to have? Where is the venue going to be? And that is pretty much the pieces of your website. And so when you start to think of it like that, it's much easier to define your ideal client because you're going to invite someone to your party that you want in your space. And that's the same thing with your ideal client. You need to attract people, and so you want to attract people that you like, and by thinking of it in that terms, you're really going to think about, do I want someone who has these qualities, or do I want someone who has these qualities? Because you want your people to feel comfortable, and so you're going to kind of think about it in a different realm. And so that will allow you to, to pick the vibe. You know, what's the vibe of your, of your tone, the tone and the vibe of your website? Um, is it exciting? Then you want to, you know, if it's going to be exciting and really out there and bold, you're going to need big, bold colors, imagery that's, you know, is really bold and exciting and energetic. Whereas if it's going to be an intimate tea or a one-on-one -on -one setting, then your vibe is going to be completely different. So that's gonna allow you to really set the stage for what's gonna come down the road for aesthetics. And Lee, can I jump in? Uh, is this something that you work with clients on? If clients are saying, I'm not sure what my vibe should be. I don't know what the, what the vibe of the party should be. Uh, maybe I have a, sen a sense of who I wanna work with. Obviously, the kinds of people, the, my ideal clients have the kinds of issues that I help with or the kinds of dreams that I help people achieve. But what's the vibe? Do you, do you have any guidance on that or you're, is that something you work with people on? This is something that I work with people on because every business is unique and different. And so it, what we do is you kind of, you, we walk through the exercise, you tell me what you want to do, what kind of people you're trying to attract, what you're trying to achieve. And then we really come up with some great, um, usually like five to six uh, words that you can use across the board and then we take that and we keep rolling that over and we roll it over until you have a good sense of who it is that you want to work with and kind of the message and the vibe that you want it to be because the other thing I think we get stuck on is we think once we have this set it will never change and it always changes because as you grow things are going to change it might just be slight variations where you know, you think, oh, I really thought I wanted to attract this person, but I need to tweak that a little. Or it might be, I really thought that that's what I wanted to go for. But after working with people, I find that I'm better with X, Y, and Z. And so you kind of rework everything. But the whole idea is to give you this base and this framework to start with. So the second thing is you need what I call pathway solutions. Um, people know this as a funnel, but here's the thing about a funnel. A funnel has a beginning and then a center and then a bottom. And the beginning is getting everybody in there. And then the center obviously is the consideration. And then the bottom is the purchase. But like with any of your marketing, everybody does not come in the same way and everybody does not come in at the same level. So what we do is we work together to figure out where are they coming from and how well do they know you, how comfortable do they feel when they're coming there, what are they looking for, and then how do I get them to the bottom line of working with me in a manner that it's going to feel good to them because it's all about the person on the other end of the screen. Um, everything that you do in your business is about how you serve that person. So keeping with the party analogy, you have to think about how are people getting to your party? One person might be coming from the north and another person from the south. 
or one person may, may know you, intimately know you, and another person might be someone that you just met who really isn't familiar with you. So you kind of have to map out all those different scenarios. It's like directions to get someone to a restaurant, you know? Everybody's coming from a different place, and some people might be familiar and some people not. So we go over the whole pathway solutions because you need to do two things on your website. You need to inform and then you need to tell someone what to do next because it's not enough just to give them the information. Um, you don't want to have to make them think. So here is where we say, okay, where are they coming from? Is it Facebook? Is it referrals? Is it from an event? And how well do they know you? Where can they find information at X, Y, and Z? And really the biggest thing that I say, and I think at, I, I'm always surprised that people really don't have a quick answer to what is your primary call to action and what is your secondary call to action? So quick tip, primary call to action, it's the one thing that you want a person to do on your website. Do one thing, not, you know, is it sell a product? Is it create an appointment with you? Is it fill out a form to get on your list? Just one thing. And then the secondary is if they don't take that one action, what is the one thing that you want them to do next so that you can continue to engage with them? And it could be if they're not, if your primary action is to set an appointment and they don't want to set the appointment, then maybe it is to either give them a free something that gives them information on how to continue to connect with you, or maybe it's to sign up for a list or to join your Facebook group or to connect with you somewhere else. And then you can, the other calls to action are all irrelevant. Not irrelevant like you don't put them on your website, meaning irrelevant to if, they're, if you're not gonna have a primary and a secondary, it doesn't matter what else you tell them to do. You want them to do what is going to help you further engage with them and provide them solutions. So the second part of your strategy and your planning is to figure out what your, product, what your pathway solutions are going to be and what the calls to action for that are that make sense. Yeah, and I, I like that you're reframing, instead of using the funnel um, metaphor, that we're using pathways and we're using the party because it's about human beings. And right. Funnel can be very uh, manipulative because we're just seeing them as numbers or little dots that are just going through this thing and some leak out and some, um, but pathways, party. Okay, great. It's like, hey, you come to my party. It's like, hey, you know, we don't know each other super well. Maybe um, instead of like this room, like there's a lot of friends who already know each other. So let, let's come over here and let me introduce you to a couple people. And it's like, oh, you might enjoy this, uh, this dish or whatever. It's like, it's like you're, 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 you're really helping them get comfortable at the party so that they can they can really engage and become one of your circle, right? Right, right. And I think it, it allows us to visualize in a different way. Instead of being on that straight and narrow path, it allows us to visualize the possibilities. And it might not be something that you, you're gonna include in the first iteration, but maybe the second or the third as you continue to grow your party. I, I always laugh because I say, you know, when you have a party or when you have a get together, what's like the one thing that you want people to do? And it's talk about it for days, months, years. You want them to have so much fun, feel so comfortable that they talk about it to their friends. And that's the same thing that you want with your website is it's only one piece of your marketing tool. So the idea is for people to it be so useful and so engaging that people will become brand ambassadors for you and refer other people to you based on the information that you provide. So if you kind of keep that in the back of your mind, it's another way to easily craft a great strategy. And that leads into the third part, which is the content strategy. So without content, it's very, very hard to create and design an effective user-friendly website. 
Not that it is, you, you can create a website without content, but it's, we kind of put the cart before the horse thinking, let's do the design and then, oh, let's do the content and make it fit. And so you might have thought about a few things beforehand, but if you don't have the content, it's going to be very hard for that to be cohesive because the words are what evokes the emotion and the emotion is what allows the connection and the connection is what helps someone to build that relationship with you and want to do business with you. But a content strategy isn't just creating your content for your website. It's how you take it further from here, how you build on it, how you continue to engage. We can't just throw a website up and just say, okay, I'm done. It's there. Let me tell everybody it's there and then go about my day. We need to continue to add to it so that when people come back, there's fresh stuff, there's different stuff, there's more targeted information, you know, whether it's a new blog post or a revamped blog post that you maybe put up a year ago and you can tweak it. So that's all part of the content strategy. And if you don't know where you're going to go, it's really hard to start to get. So you want to remember with your content strategy, it's not just about the words on the page. It's how you're going to continue to build it, what you're going to offer. And if you think of it in terms of actions and solutions with benefits and features instead of me and I and what I give to you and what I offer, it's going to be much easier for you to continue that growth. So let's look at your about page. Everybody writes the about page about themselves, but the about page really needs to be about the ideal client as well, because you need to address their needs. And then in telling them how you offer the solutions, that's where you work in about yourself is what you bring to the table. Same thing with the party. You know, I am, I'm fun and energetic and I like to bring that to the party and I'm going to do this by providing you with like my favorite playlist and my favorite foods. And then you can kind of go into your story from there. Same with your services. You don't want to just give them the I do this, I do that, I provide one-on-one -on -one coaching, you want to tell them what they're going to get out of it. You're going to get these results. Or I found that working with my clients, they've increased conversions by X amount of dollars. Or they've got more peace of mind in their life. Or they've lost, you know, 50 pounds by doing simple techniques that I have learned in my journey to weight loss. Whatever it is, you need to frame it so that it's a benefit to them. And so by, by putting all these pieces together, it really creates not only a cohesive marketing tool, but it also creates cohesion across the board, whether you're on your website, on your social media, at an event, so that you come across as authentic, energetic, and someone can build a relationship with you. And so if you use that party analogy, I found that that's the most well-rounded way to plan because you start to think about everything. You think about the little details. You think about when it's over. What can I do the next time to make it even better? And so you start to really think differently, but you think more easily about the decisions that you have to make. So I, that's my strategy. Um, I've come up with that strategy because for me, just trying to put old pieces into new techniques was really difficult. And I was, I always seemed to be getting stuck on choosing the ideal client. And then I got stuck in changing that to be like my brand at one point was all over the board until I was sitting there thinking, how can I make this work for me? I'm going to plan a party because I'm really good at planning parties. And then I realized, oh my gosh, I was telling someone about that. And then I took a client through that and I thought, it's so easy to do this that when you start to think differently and who can't plan an event, then you find that designing your website, planning your website, whether you're doing it yourself or working with someone else, becomes much easier and less stressful. 
Yeah. Wow. I love this. I love this. I love that um, you are, you have this kind of big picture strategy, and at the same time, you also are able to help clients with the details, uh, yes. the, tech, the, the technology part of it, which a lot of people, of course, are intimidated by. But you have you know all the tech stuff within WordPress as well. Um, so how those who are watching this or listening to this, like how can they work with you? What's the next step to, uh, to engage with you? So the next step is you can book a consulting session with me and you can do that on my website, leadrozak.com. Or you can just go ahead and schedule a chat and that would be leadrozak.com forward slash let's chat, all one word, L-E-T-S-C-H-A-T. And um, that gets the, the party rolling because whether you um, are ready to design or you just have a few questions, we can talk about that in the chat session. Or I can even give you some of these techniques to at least get you starting so that you can make the determination, is this something that I'm ready for or do I need to do something else? Because I don't believe that um, everyone may be ready for a website design. Sometimes you might need to work with a coach first or a copywriter first or even a brand strategist. So we have the consulting sessions to get you ready for that, to say, here's what you need to do for the next step or here's how you pick a framework that will work for your work style, your budget and where you want to take your business. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Lee, for sharing your strategy with us. I hope that those watching have gotten some idea of where, where they are on this journey and what, what's needed next. So I hope, folks, if you connected, resonated with what Lee was sharing and her presence, please go out and reach out to her. And I'm sure I'm, I'll have the links uh, mentioned in the notes of this video somewhere above or below, depending on where you're watching this. And um, thank you so much, Lee, for doing this interview. Thanks for having me, George.